Hey, I'm Sven Squad. How are ya doing? I heard ya. I heard ya. How do you get the best ending in the Legendary Edition of Mass Effect 3? Well, I'm gonna show you. Most of the assets you'll be collecting are by scanning every system in Mass Effect 3. Let's just get that out of the way. Which can be an enormous grind considering that the Reapers start chasing you if you're not careful. So, why not just make it easy for yourself by preparing accordingly? Just like I said in my top 5 tips video, make sure you start preparing by doing absolutely everything you can in Mass Effect 1 and 2. This includes every assignment. I'll break down a few things that some may have missed, especially choices between one thing or another. An example here would be Major Kirahi. Should you save him? Well of course you might think, but no no, not of course. If you save him during the Vermeer mission, you get 20 points. Well that's neat. What happens if he dies? Well, then you'll get the special tasks group instead. These are worth 35 points. Wait, what? Well, there you go. You get more points if you let Major Kirahi die during the Vermeer mission. So let those Geth flyers do their job. This is just the first example of what one choice can mean for the last game. So let's check some of these off, one by one, eh? I won't be able to check every one of these off because the video would have to be several hours long, and you guys don't have that time and neither do I. But let's start off with some things that you may have missed out on on Mass Effect 1. Alright, so to the Bring Down the Sky DLC in Mass Effect 1, if you let Balak live and get away, you'll meet him again in Mass Effect 3. He will be worth 15 points, since he can begrudgingly join you. If you didn't play Bring Down the Sky, well, then he survives and you'll meet him anyway. On Pharaohs, by saving both Shiala and the colonists, you get 30 points, so make sure to use those gas grenades. Get down. Ah! If you can resist punching Kalisa, aka the reporter, this will award you with 5 points. This only counts if you never punch her. <laughs> Good luck with that. I've had enough of your snide insinuations. Not this time, you mill. Uh. Now, it doesn't matter if you choose Caden or Ashley on Vermeer, they're both worth an equal amount of assets. Remember that you'll have to let them stay on the Citadel if you want the war assets. If you take either of these back into your team in Mass Effect 3, you will lose out on 25 points. Rex surviving Vermeer will make sure you get 5 more points than with Reeve, his brother. An additional bonus is the Krogan mercenaries, which are worth 75 points. You'll only get these if Rex survives and you cure the Genophage. Saving the Rachni Queen and then saving her again in Mass Effect 3 will grant you 100 points. Alright, so here comes the hard question. Should you save or abandon the Council? Well, if you abandon them, you'll gain Admiral Mikhailovich's favor, worth 25 points. You also won't lose the 75 points from the Alliance, sacrificing a part of their fleet to save the Council, which makes this 100 points gained. You can also gain the SDG task group, worth 70 points, if you choose to abandon the Council and then save the new Salarian Counselor in Mass Effect 3. But hold on a moment. If you save the Council, you'll actually get the Salarian Third Fleet, which are worth 125 points alone, plus the Destiny Ascension, which is worth 70 points. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose here if you want to sacrifice or save the council, because you basically get the same amount of points. Moving on to Mass Effect 2, most of your war assets will come from making sure that all your squad mates survive the suicide mission. Every squad member can be worth 25 points, so don't lose any of them. You'll have to do some minor missions for your old squad mates in Mass Effect 3 to ensure that you get these points though, so don't miss out on those either. If you upgrade the Normandy SR2 with the Thanix Cannon, the Silaris Armor and Cyclonic Barriers, these will be worth a total of 65 points. You'll need these anyway if you want to ensure that no one dies during the suicide mission. Make sure you keep Malan's data from Morden's loyalty mission. If you don't, Eve will die from complications in Mass Effect 3 when Morden synthesizes the cure for the Genophage, if you choose to cure the Genophage. Eve is worth 50 points. When Tally and Legion are arguing, Make sure that you have enough Paragon or Renegade points in order to solve the situation diplomatically. Much. Tally, your father was running brutal experiments. If the subjects had been human, I'd damn well be telling the Alliance about it. You may need this in order to get the Paragon or Renegade dialogue option, 
which you'll have to choose if you want the war to end peacefully. Nobody else dies today. Legion, keep going. While we're on the subject of Legion, make sure you override the Geth heretics during Legion's loyalty mission. Destroying them will cause you to lose 150 points, and rewriting them will cause the Quarians to lose 50 points. So, converting the heretics are the best choice here because you lose the least amount of points. If you complete the Overlord DLC, you'll gain Gavin Archer as a potential war asset. Completing the Grissom Academy mission and saving his brother David, and also saving Gavin during Array, which is the mission you encounter Jacob again, will grant you 25 points from Gavin and 5 points from David. Destroying the Alpha Relay and the Arrival DLC will ensure that you don't lose 50 points. Not doing it will cause Admiral Hackett to send an Alliance team to deal with it, all of them dying in the process. So make sure you do this DLC. It's pretty great either way. Oh, and then what about the Collector Base? Well, if you choose to destroy it, you'll gain the Reaper Heart, which you'll get when you assault the Elusive Man's base in Mass Effect 3. If you choose to give the base to Cerberus, you will be awarded with the Reaper Brain instead of after the assault. The heart is worth 100 points and the brain is worth 110 points, so yeah, keep it if you need 10 additional assets. Alright, so the majority of war assets are collected throughout Mass Effect 3, as I stated before. I won't list every war asset as that's going to take an entire day to do, but I'll tell you the most important ones. Curing the Krogan Genophage will give you 300 war assets. Before this, make sure you disarm the Turian Bomb, because if you don't, you will lose 250 points. Disarming the bomb grants you the Turian Blackwatch team, worth 75 points. If you kept Malin's data from Mass Effect 2, Eve will live and she will be worth 50 points. You'll lose out on the Salarian First Fleet, but that's only worth 150 points, so they're not really worth it because you have to sabotage the cure to get them to join you. Now, the Geth and Quarian War needs to be solved. Losing out on either side will make this much harder for you, as you can lose several hundred points if you pick a side. So all in all, just remember to save Admiral Chorus, disable the Geth Squadron, and make sure your Paragon or Renegade meter are high enough so you can tell Admiral Geralt to cease fire during the Priority Rannoch mission. AKA the mission where you killed the Reaper. So again, I'm not going to repeat every single war asset for the Geth and Quarian War, just know that solving the conflict will give you a massive boost to your war assets. If you cannot solve the situation peacefully, well, then you're gonna have to grind that scanner even harder. And then of course, you'll have to help Arya out with retaking Omega, which will grant you hundreds of points alone. If you choose to spare General Petrovsky, you'll gain 30 points. Don't forget to do the Leviathan DLC. It will grant you the Leviathan Enthrallment team, which grants you 400 points. That is one massive boost. There are some more war assets you gain from doing this, so don't skip it. So, that's it. These are the most important things to do in order to get the perfect ending. Now, when it comes to numbers, you'll need around 7,800 points for it. But it's pretty easy to get there if you follow these steps, and just scanning every system on the galaxy map until you have enough. There are obviously some things that I've missed out on, but considering that the games are chock full of war assets everywhere, it'd take way too long to make a video to list all of them. Just have in mind to do absolutely everything and save every life you can when you can. I'll be leaving a link to the Mass Effect wiki with a list of every war asset from the original games. Now I'm not really sure if they've added additional war assets, but it wouldn't surprise me if they did for the Legendary Edition. Once you're ready, Admiral Hackett will tell you that the fleets are as ready as they're gonna get, so remember to check in with them often. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos. I've got a bunch of them, so if you enjoyed this video, you'll hopefully enjoy those too. As always, have a great day and Sven Squad, Mr. Olthen out.